Hi, I'm Ben Hanwell, Product Specialist here at Atlas Copco, and today we're going to talk about connecting an accessory to the Power Focus 6000. Let's take a look at our hardware. So if you look over here, we have our Power Focus 6000 controller, we have our Max I.O. cable, and we have our socket selector. This is our accessory for this example, but this could be a stack light, it could be an operator panel, it could be a multitude of accessories. So first things first, let's make sure that we have everything set up correctly from a hardware standpoint, and then we'll take a look in the software and connect the accessory. When I go inside of the controller screen, we're gonna check and make sure that our Max I.O. cable is connected and tight so that when I give it a good solid pull, it's not moving. From there, we can trace and run our Max I.O. cable out to our accessory. Now in this example, it's a socket selector. Now from here, we're gonna check a couple of things. What you'll notice is that the Max I.O. port on the Power Focus 6000, there's only one of them. And what this means is, is that all of the connected accessories must be daisy chained together, which is why all of our accessories have two ports. What you'll see here on the far left is we have a rotary dial, which is for setting the device's ID. That ID needs to be unique from any other device that's also daisy chained together with it. So for example, if you have two of these socket selectors, you're gonna need to have one of them set to one and one of them set to two. They cannot be the same number. Next, you can see that I put my Max I.O. cable into this open port and I tightened it up. And then next to that, you're gonna see another location for a Max I.O. port. Now it doesn't matter which one of these we use, but if there are no additional accessories after this one, we do need to use a terminator to determine that this is the end of the chain. And then the only other piece that you're gonna see is this 24 volt external power input. Each connected accessory on the Power Focus 6000 draws a different amount of power. Traditionally, what we expect to get is, if we're daisy chaining these together, we're probably gonna get between four and six accessories connected before we need to start providing external 24 volt power to the accessories themselves. Please, whatever accessories you're using, consult the user manual to figure out the exact power draw. So as you can see here, I have my socket tray fully connected, connected in the controller, routed out to the accessory, and everything's buttoned up on the underside of the accessory. I have my socket tray drilled out so that I have my different sockets with different sizes located here. So at this point, we're gonna go down into the software and get this all set up and working. So now that we're down in the software, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the virtual station, we're gonna scroll down to our accessories tab, we're gonna click in here, and what you're gonna notice is we have all these different connected accessories up at the top. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go look for my socket selector, and you can see we have the socket selector connected, and we have a configuration for the socket selector. Now I'm gonna double check this configuration for the socket selector real quick. I'm gonna go home, go to my configurations tab, I'm gonna go to my socket selector, I'm gonna make sure that control is set to auto, since in this case, we are not externally controlling the socket selector. And now in here, I'm actually gonna remove the additional eight positions, and I'm only gonna activate positions one and two. Because as you remember from before, we only have two sockets in this specific socket tray. So now that we have our socket selector completely configured, we're gonna go assign the accessory. We come back in here, we go and find our socket selector, we assign our configuration, and we assign it, and then we're gonna make sure we hit the apply button. From here, you can see we have the accessory connected, and that's all there is to it. As you can see here, our socket tray is blinking, and when I select a socket, it's actually gonna select that tightening program on the controller itself. 
So now, in this video, to summarize, we've talked about connected accessories on the PowerFocus 6000 from a hardware standpoint, what's required, assigning them within the software, and then double checking to make sure that they work. I hope that this video has been informative for you. And if you do have any additional questions, please reach out to your Atlas Copco representative and we can make sure to get you some answers. And thanks for watching.